Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control on a Mouse Monday. Uh, last week, we went over mouse traps. I said I was going to throw this away, but I decided I'd keep it as a prop to show you how nasty these things can get and why you don't want to use these and why you're much better using bait. Now this is a bait station. Um, mice will, like I was saying last week, you need to go back and check that video if you haven't already seen it, but mice will pee in these as well, but only if they decide to use them as a home. They will do that. Now, I carry my key. These all come with a key. Uh, that Protector, make, Protector makes a uh, uh, rat bait station as well that works really, really well, and I'll go over that in just a minute. But this is a product that's made by Protector. They are not paying me. I wish they would, but, <laughs> but uh, they have the best bait stations anywhere. Uh, that I really like them as far as tamper proof. They're not easy to get into and so you don't have to worry about somebody's child coming along and finding a bait station and getting the rat poison out of it because you don't want that to happen. If you bait, you need to realize that baiting from mice is something that is, you have to be very careful. You have to read all your labels. You have to make sure you're not misapplying the rodenticide because rodenticides are serious business. You could make somebody's pet very sick or worse. You could make somebody's children very sick or worse. You don't need that. That's not something you need to do. It's why a lot of exterminators have moved to uh, trapping or using glue boards or something like that to get mice. I still use bait. I, uh, you have to be real careful. And like I said, read your labels. And honestly, if you do it right, it's the best. There's no better way to get rid of mice or rats than using good old fashioned rat poison. Um, these are the bait stations and what you'll do is you put the key in right here flip it back and open it up real easy to get in not easy to get in if you don't have a key and so it's empty you have this one little square now these will take the rectangle blocks a lot of people use um, I don't use them I find that the uh, weather block works the best this is going to be more toxic than other this is an acute poisoning rather than chronic now the difference between chronic poisoning and acute poisoning is chronic poisoning means the mouse has to constantly feed. They have to feed once a day, twice a day, you know, at least once every couple days, they have to feed on it to die. Uh, they just need to bite this one time. If they eat just a bite, it's enough to kill them. It's like I said, it's pretty high toxicity. You have to be real careful. It's a very restrictive label. You can't just put it anywhere. Uh, I've been behind exterminators where they put it in loose. You'll find this stuff laying around, uh, you know, under appliances, thinking that it's okay to put it there. And yes, no one has come in contact with it, except for me, because I'm an exterminator and I come and I find it. But, you know, if someone's pulling out their washer and dryer and their dog or something runs behind and eats it because dogs eat plastic, you know, Dogs eat lots of things that no one else would even think of eating, and that's one of the biggest issues. Now, in all the years I've been an exterminator, I've never once heard of anybody's cat accidentally eating this poison, but dogs will eat will eat it. They, they absolutely will eat it. Um, so you want to be really careful how you apply. I'm going to say this, and I would say this every video that I talk about pesticides or rodenticides, always read your label follow your label it's a bible when you're going to apply pesticide you do what your label says you do what the rodenticide says always and labels are different you may not even be able to buy this in some states you know that's that's just the thing because it's poison because it's a pretty strong poison you you uh you may not be able to buy it they've they've started to become really restrictive on rat poisons the EPA Back, I believe it back in the year 2006, I think it was, actually filed a motion to eliminate all rat poisons from the market. Now, I don't know how much, you know, success they've had with that because this is, what, 2017 and you can still buy this. You can find this online. You can buy this. It's really effective. It works really well. I recommend it. It's what, it's what works. There, I've gone behind other exterminators who use that lime green block bait. It's or red, it comes in two different colors, red or lime green. It's about that long, and it's like a rectangle with little gnaw marks and stuff on it. Um, I'll show you what this looks like. This is a little blue block. 
sealed in wax. And you'll notice I'm wearing gloves. Always wear gloves when you apply, when you handle pesticide or rodenticide, always. You don't want to get any poison on this. You don't want to get any insecticide on this, is what I should say. This is rat poison. You want it to be palatable. You want the mice or the rats to want to eat it. If I came in your house and I was a pest control technician, you know, which I am, and I'm treating around underneath your stove or underneath your, and this stuff is laying out, for one, it shouldn't be laying out. And two, you don't want to get any pesticide on it because the mice will not eat it, which is why it's really important to put them in a bait station. Now, you just, it clicks right in, just like that. It holds it really well, and then you close it, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to come out. Mice can't get it. You can kind of reach in, you can kind of feel it in there, but this is not coming out of this box. It is in there, and just to show you how hard it is to get into one of these without a key, you can't, you just cannot break into it at all. It's really well sealed. It's why I always recommend these. Now you can, of course, you can get in it with a screwdriver. You know, you can fiddle around with the hole and you can make it work. You can get in. I've done that when I forgot my key, which is why it's on my key ring because I can't drive my car without my keys. So it's a good, good practice to keep it somewhere safe where you know you're going to have it if you buy these kind of bait stations so you can get in there and you can check on them and you can put new poison in it. So always look after your bait stations. Make sure they stay in the place where you put them. They need to, you know, you need to know how many you've used on a job. If you've done, used four stations, if you've used 10 stations, you need to make sure you check every single station every month. Now that's mainly for pest control technicians, but this goes for homeowners too. If you're thinking of doing mouse control yourself, you need to keep on your bait stations, make sure, because what will happen a lot of times is, and I'll open this back up to show you. See, it's so easy with the key. Um, a lot of times what will happen is the mice will start to eat around the edges of this. They'll start to eat in here and they'll make a groove in there and it will cause the bait to get loose and it'll shake around in there. So you wanna make sure you check your bait stations. If the bait gets kind of loose and you think it might get drug out because mice will drag food around, they like to pack it, pack rats and stuff. And so you wanna make sure that it's not loose and rattling around in the box because what'll happen is a mouse will pick it up if they think they can carry it. They'll pick it up, they'll carry it out and then they'll drop it in the middle of the floor because they get spooked and then there's rat poison in the middle of the floor and who gets blamed? You do. Even though the mouse is the one that did it, you're the one at blame because you didn't keep an eye on your bait stations. Always look after your bait stations. And now we're gonna move on to a rat bait station. Uh, also, at this point, I'm going to uh, plug myself. <laughs> uh, you can check me out on Green Acres PC. Dot com. It's A-K-E-R-S. That's how you spell my last name. Um, that, I've got a really good informative article there. And I mentioned this on my first video as well. About mice, about rats, and the diseases they carry. And about the uh, cops driving past the house, running sirens. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, it's, it's about uh, mouse control, rat control, why it's important to, to practice proper rodent control in your home um, and the diseases and stuff. So I highly recommend you go and check that out. I'll link it in the description below. But, um, and I go through that a lot too on my first video if you wanna go check that out. But this is a rat bait station here. Now this is a brand new one, never been opened. Of course that was new too. I always try to use new stuff. Um, so the way this works is it's, you know, pretty involved bait station. Take the tape off here. got all right some little metal rods now I'm not going to get all these out and explain this all these but basically what you want to do is you've got these little holes inside the bait station and actually you put them in this is probably easier to see for y'all you put them in like this and then you can take your bait and I guess I'll well I don't want to put bait in this bait station yet because I don't always use rat bait stations I don't, I don't get a lot of rat business um, Charlottesville's not too bad for rats but anyway, so this, you'll take your bait and you put it on that rod like that. Now it's in there. And so when you close this, these rods don't go anywhere. Let's open it back up. See? The bait's still on the rod. And that way it, it stays safe inside the bait station to where, like I was telling you, now these, I actually find that these are much more secure than a actual mouse bait station because you'll find that the mouse has to eat 
all the way to this little circle here before it's even going to come off of that rod. And a lot of times it still won't come off. So that's really safe. As far as a safe bait station, mice will use rat bait stations. You can, you can use these for mice. I recommend these, especially for outdoor use because it's gonna be more protected from the weather. It's not gonna get so wet. You've got these little troughs inside here that protect them. It's also got a spot in the very middle here that you can use. You can bolt it down to like a concrete block or a wood block or something that's not gonna get moved. And so you can, I find that these are a lot better for stationary applications where you're worried someone might kick it over. Um, you know, you'll find these, now that you've seen this video, you'll start noticing these. But you go to like Walmart or, you know, McDonald's or somewhere like that and you look around the outside a lot of times they'll have these set up up against the wall and uh, they'll be like painted white sometimes they're black but sometimes they're white the black ones will absorb more sunlight and because the bait is sealed in wax this stuff will melt and it's once it's melted the rats don't want to eat it mice mice will still eat it because mice eat lots of stuff but rats are really picky about what they eat so and and one thing about rat control is you can put a bait station out rats may not even touch the bait for a month so you need to make sure you check your bait and then all of a sudden it'll just be gone because rats they don't like uh change they don't like to feel like they've uh like the environment around them is changing at all and they they rather stick to something that they're used to and so the rat will go in this bait station and he'll travel back and forth and back and forth and he'll come in and he'll look around because they're real curious but he may not taste it at all may still have some of your odor on it from where you applied the bait and so he's like i don't know if i really want to eat that and they'll wait like a month and then they'll come along and they'll decide well it's been sitting there long enough i think it's all right and then they'll just eat it all so keep an eye on your rat bait stations just as much as your uh, mouse bait stations just because the bait is still there from month to month doesn't mean the rat hasn't been in there doesn't mean he doesn't know it's there and so always keep an eye on it don't just forget about your bait station because you put bait in two three months ago and the rat still hasn't eaten it they're really cautious creatures they're not like mice mice will eat bait usually within a day or two they eat it right away they love it so um that's what i recommend on mice uh so anyway that's that's about it for today, I think, on rat bait stations and, and the mouse bait stations. We'll go over some different uh, rodenticides that I use. Now, this is the only mouse poison that I use. This is a uh, weather block. It's a really good product. It's, um, like I said, it doesn't work for every application. It's, you know, you have to be really careful how you apply it. I have turned down rodent jobs because it's just, you know, it just wasn't the right poison for the job. So, you know, keep that in mind when you buy something like this. This is a pretty expensive rodenticide. This is going to cost you a lot of money, but it's the number one best thing on the market. I can't, I cannot talk any better about it. I've been behind exterminators that have used tracking powder. Uh, I don't own tracking powder. I don't use tracking powder. It's too much of a risk because if it gets stirred up because it's a dust and you breathe it in, you can get really sick. Uh, I actually did get sick one time because of the misapplication of tracking powder by a previous exterminator and I didn't realize that's what it was I was in because it looks just like dust. They had spread it all around under the crawl space. I got really sick. I was really ill for like a day or two because of inhalation of this dust because I was under the crawl space treating for termites. And I wasn't even thinking about rodents underneath this crawl space, but they had put that powder everywhere. And we're, of course, drilling through it and stirring it up and it's getting all in the air and you're breathing it in. And so I don't advise tracking powder ever. It's just too toxic and too much risk. And a lot of states have actually banned the use of it anyway, uh, unless it's down inside a burrow, you know, in the ground where no one's gonna come in contact with it. In a case like that, it might work, but it's gonna get wet outside. So in, 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 all, of my, uh, in all of my expertise and all of my years doing exterminating, I never use tracking powder for mice. Bait's the way to go, it works. It's really effective. Um, and I guess that's all for baking for mice. Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll go over one more thing, too. Let me put this back in here so I don't lose this. This is really loud. I'm so sorry. That was really loud. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, try to put this back away here. I want to go over a little bit and explain to you on how to properly install a bait station. 
because much like the mouse trap, and like I said, you can go back and you can check my video on mouse traps. It's almost the same. You want to apply it up next to the wall. Now with the rodent bait station, it's, you've got, if you look at the side of the bait station, you've got a hole there. That's where the rat's going to travel through. That's where the mice are going to travel through. You want to put that right up against the baseboard, slammed right up against the edge so that the rat comes along. He's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and he sees a hole and he goes in there and he finds a bait and he eats it. That's what's going to be effective. You don't want to turn it around like this because the hole is not there. The rat will come up. He might go around and he might go in this hole or he might climb up and go over the top. You want to be as inviting as possible. You want to put the hole right up near the baseboard where the rat's going to notice it. Same with mouse bait station. Now, these are the reason I like these bait stations so much is because they work really well because there's the hole there. They work really well up against the baseboard, but they also work really well in a corner. So you could imagine that this is like a corner. You could use a corner of this table right here where it's like a little groove right there. So the mouse is coming along and he, he guts along the corner. He goes in this hole, finds the bait, eats it, and comes out this hole and goes right on back down the wall where he came. So you could imagine that's a wall there. So they work really well in the corner. They work really well on the side. You want to put these places that no one's going to come in contact with it. You just want to be really careful with your bait. I can't stress it enough. Always, always read your label. Just like, like I said, I'm, it's been a couple years and since I started my YouTube channel. Um, and I, I just want to be upfront and honest with you. When I start to talk about chemicals and rodenticides and things I use and how I use it, I don't want you to get the wrong, you know, I, I want you to get the wrong idea. I don't want you to think that, oh yeah, this is the, this is the thing for me. I'm going to do this. It's going to work. It's going to be great. And then you go and poison your pet. You know, I don't want to hear that, you know, your dog got sick and you killed your dog because you misapplied rodenticide. Rodenticide is an extremely serious thing you need to really contemplate before you decide to use it because you need to realize that when you use it, there is always, and even when I use it, there's still a possibility that a mouse might get in one of these and carry the bait out, even between visits, if the mouse infestation is that bad. And so you just have to realize the risk that you run. Maybe it's better to cut, to check it in a couple weeks. You know, I have done that on mouse jobs. I've gone and done an initial and the mice were just so bad, I thought it was safer to come back in like two weeks. And when I came back, the mouse poison was almost gone. And so it was a good idea to do that. And sometimes that's what you need to do in order to keep your customer safe, in order to keep yourself safe. So like I said, always wear your gloves. You do have to replace these every now and then, just like with the rat mouse traps with peeing on them and stuff like that. They don't have to be replaced that often, but you know, you should think about replacing them about once a year or so, get new mouse traps, then bait stations. Yeah, that's what they are. Um, so I hope this has been an informative video for you. If you really like my videos, give me a thumbs up, really appreciate it. If you really like it, then subscribe to my channel. Uh, next week we're going to go about, uh, we're going to talk about some of the diseases that mice can carry and about the things they like to get into in your home, how you can find mice, what to look for, basically how to try to seal them out of your house, etc. things like that. So, uh, I hope you look forward to seeing me next week. I really appreciate it and y'all have a great day.